Lord God, we thank you and praise you. We give you the or honor, and the glory, and the praise. Thank you, O God, for all that you have done. And Lord God, we just come in the name of Jesus. That you will look upon us as we um, prepare and present your word. That the words will become your words. And Lord of God, in the, in the name of Jesus, that you look upon all these who are gathered here, and that your word uh, will be received among them. And Lord of God, and not only receive, but shared among your people and among those who need to know that you are the one and true living God. And Lord of God, and we forever give you the praise, honor, and the glory in the mighty, the majestic name of Jesus. And all the people said, Amen. If you will, turn with me to uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. as such. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a witness, cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed on about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which do so easily beset us. I want to talk with you from the, from the thought, dump the junk. Amen. Dump the junk. We, we have here that um, the, the apostle would have, was addressing the believers, um, the Hebrews, if you will, and that uh, he, he was addressing a, a people that was ultimately uh, one who was uh, discouraged in their faith or some that who was wavering in their faith or some who that was willing, if you will, to give up on the faith. And the reason being is because there was, there was a, Paul had to remind them, uh, uh, there was a uh, persecution, if you will, as such that was uh, made that have been uh, going on. And, uh, people were uh, the people were under attack because they were stressing, if you will, their belief in Jesus Christ. So, so the apostle Paul had to remind them of, if you will, the previous chapter. If you go back to the previous chapter, which is called the faith chapter, he how he had run down the. Uh, different people, the, the patriarchs, if you will, uh, of the Old Testament and the stuff and the stuff that they had to, to endure because of their faith. You remember that uh, in Hebrews chapter eleven, he ran down um, and talked about by faith how uh, he talked about uh, Cain and Abel and. He talked about uh, Abel and, and his sacrifice. He talked about Enoch. And he talked about Noah and Abraham. And he talked about uh, Sarah, if you will. He, he talked about uh, Isaac and Jacob and, and Joseph and Moses. And he talked about um, 
uh, how uh, uh, talked about Rahab and David and Samson and Jephthah and, and he talked about Barak and how they all were, they believed and they had faith in the living God that they may be able to obtain the promise and and what the, the apostle was illustrating, if you will, that that uh, uh, the, the belief of the patriarchs uh, this, this was not always smooth sailing, but he was letting them know that they had to endure some things as they were trying to obtain the, the promise and belief in God. So, so what does that suggest to us is that, that contrary to proper popular belief that that uh, once you are saved that or uh, once you believe uh, in uh, the Lord Jesus Christ that your life will turn all the way around and and the, everything shall be smooth sailing but I, I have suggest to you that that as a believer in Jesus Christ that that uh, there are going to be some trials and some persecutions that you're going to have to endure so the Apostle Paul the Apostles he said that the people uh, uh, afford time that that they were some were cut in half, some were tempted, some were killed by the sword, some were uh, uh, um, uh, been uh, persecuted, some had to hide in a mountain. But they they had obtained a good report because one is that they did not give up on God. So that's what the apostle is trying to illustrate here or uh, encourage uh, the uh, the Christians or believers or the Hebrews uh, that uh, uh, that you're not to give up and and they. They were to the point to where they were uh, about to give up on the faith and were ultimately neglecting them, their fellowshipping together. And so I think I need to share notice with you this morning is that um, that we we all need to uh, not to give up on our faith. So so they were ultimately they were on their way to go on back to do the things that they used to do lest they will have to endure further trials and tribulation or persecution so so the apostle paul is here um uh, uh in the, this uh, uh the, the 12th chapter had to illustrate or to give the illusion uh, that um the, the, this Christian walk is, is like as uh, uh, a runner in a, a race. So he said, he said that that um, uh, we have a cloud of witnesses that that is uh, uh, watching us. So he gave the uh, illusion or the illustration uh, as if that the Christians of that time was uh, in a race and the cloud of witnesses uh, were watching down as if they were in an auditorium uh, to cheer them on. So 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 in that sense, what the 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 apostle was saying that that with this illustration uh, that the cloud of witnesses are watching us and encouraging us in essence to say that uh, they know what you have been through because they've been there and done that and that the encouragement is that to let them know that you are and that you can make it how many of us know even even with our uh, forefathers that we would go through different things in life, and, but yet there's someone that's standing nearby that will give you encouragement, let you know that you are able to make it because where we are going, that they have already been through it, and if they have already been through it, then therefore they know that you can go through it and you are able to make it. So he gives this illustration, he gives this illusion of the cloud of witnesses that um, they are able to make it that they are surrounded and give them encouragement that you can make it uh, and I think I need to share notice uh, even in our day and time that, that the, the Christendom uh, or the believers in Christ uh, are going to and have 
have uh, endured some uh, persecution to where it will make you go back and to do the things that you used to do. But I think I need to share notice with you. And the, the Apostle Paul has given uh, the uh, Hebrews uh, that you can make it, you can endure, you can uh, go through, you can uh, uh, succeed, and you are going to be successful. So, uh, just as uh, the cloud of witnesses, as uh, uh, the Apostle Paul has given uh, uh, to uh, these uh, Hebrews, as if they are watching, uh, that uh, he encouraged uh, these uh, uh, Hebrews uh, in this writing that we are to walk and live as if that the clouds of witnesses are watching us on a daily at a daily basis. Uh, so I think I need to share notice uh, even though there are not, if you will, uh, the cloud of witnesses uh, as uh, the Apostle Paul had illustrated here but I think I need to share two things with your ears that one, there is always somebody watching you as you go along. That as you are professing your faith, someone is watching you. Someone is taking note of what you're doing. And then secondly, God sees everything. And every once in a while, how, how many of us know that uh, if there are some things that we have to endure, that God, every once in a while God will send you a word of encouragement to let you know that everything is going to be alright. That everything is, is working out for the good. So 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 the apostle Paul is give this illustration uh, as if they are as a racer or a runner who is running a race. And I think I need to share notice uh, that there is preparation stages uh, when it comes to uh, one who is running a race uh, or one who is uh, running a track, if you will. And I suggest to you uh, that the Apostle Paul uh, was saying to lay aside every weight uh, and sin uh, which do so easily beset us. So what is the Apostle Paul saying here? What is he saying uh, that um, we lay aside every weight that so easily beset us? And we will find that that weight uh, Weight, uh, uh, the Greek word for weight uh, is uh, akos, uh, and akos means uh, something that is uh, crooked or hooked, uh, or anything that is uh, attached, uh, or anything that is suspended by a hook. Uh, and thus, uh, what the Apostle Paul is saying here, uh, that anything that extends uh, his whole weight, uh, so if it anything or anyone that is hooked to a weight uh, that their weight chance tends uh, to chance to hold you down or slow you down or anything that keep you from moving forward. Uh, so as he illustrated a runner in a race, uh, you know that anyone that uh, 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 had a red track or even if you look at uh, the uh, upcoming uh, Olympics as dealing with uh, running track track uh, that the, the runner uh, will not wear anything uh, that will hold him back. Uh, even uh, when it comes to wearing the track shoes, uh, that the shoes are light in weight uh, to where they will not or want anything uh, to keep them from running the race. Uh, and they will not wear any kind of clothing uh, that will uh, hinder them uh, from running running and enduring the race or anything that will bring about 
or that will stop them from running the best race they know how. So the weight that a person has is something or anything that keep them from moving forward, anything that keep you from making progress, anything that keep you from being all that God will have for you to be, or anything that will um, obstruct uh, your relationship with God. Uh, so, uh, so then, uh, as believers, uh, that we need to remove anything and everything uh, that will impede uh, our relationship with Christ uh, and that will cast a shadow on our, on our lives as being children of God. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That, um, that everyone had a different weight. My weight may not be your weight and your weight may not be my weight. And you know but sometimes, sometimes uh, uh, in throughout the body of Christ uh, that uh, people want to judge people for the weight that they are carrying. But I tell you everyone has some kind of weight that tends to pull them back and to keep them from being all that God wants them to be. And sometimes some people uh, their weight might just be uh, unaware or will not bring a conscious effort to be what God will have for it to be. Or one will not have the consciousness to live the life to where it will be pleasing to God. But let me put it to you like this. There are so many people they carry their weight uh, and their weight uh, may be pride. Uh, you know we got a lot of people who got a lot of pride uh, and you can't tell them anything. Uh, and then you have some people who have ego problems. Uh, some people have a weight of worldliness. Uh, some people have a weight uh, of having an uncomfortable uh, or has a quick temper. Uh, some people uh, their weight may just be I uh, have a corrupt imagination. Some weight people carry a uh, weight of depression. Some people have a weight uh, to where they lack compassion. Some people have a weight uh, to where they may have uh, an improper or unholy attachment. Uh, whatever your weight is uh, that you need to lay it aside, if it's slowing you down to keep you from being all that God wants you to be. So the weight, so the weight, uh, uh, you know how it is, uh, uh, that weight uh, uh, you tend to lean towards, you tend to do, because it was those things uh, that you used to do before you even got saved. Uh, you know that weight, you know that weight, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, that um, uh, your response to others. Uh, let me put it to you like this. Uh, you know, Jesus said uh, to love your enemies. Uh, you know, then somebody may be carrying a weight uh, where you cannot at that point uh, love your enemies. Uh, you know, and these are the areas uh, that a person uh, that we all uh, need to work on. Uh, that anything that keep you from being all that God God wants you to be. That weight that slows you down, that weight that get into your way, that burden that you may be carrying that may slow you down or have your focus on Christ. So a weight, Paul said, lay aside every weight, not just some weight, but every weight. You know, some of us, we want to carry that weight 
it that is convenient for us. We may throw aside some weight that doesn't benefit us, but some of the weight we tend to carry along and do it conveniently, or rather, it has a reflection of God or not. No wonder Jesus said to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So then uh, he says uh, to lay aside uh, every weight uh, and sin that possess us. Uh, so what? Uh, so what is the apostle Paul is saying? Or uh, every sin uh, that uh, so easily beset us? Uh, now, uh, when you look at the, uh, this uh, here, uh, this so easily beset us. Uh, and when you look at that uh, part of the words or that phrase that easily beset us, the Greek phrase for that is uh, uh, euro persistos, euro persistos, uh, which means something that stands well around us or that sin that grabs us or what it is it that is nearby us and readily occurs. Uh, something that's ready to uh, carry, something that's a uh, sin that is always around us, in a sense, uh, something that is wrapped around us and hinder us on our course. So let me put it to you like this. Uh, you know, with the runners, uh, they had that garment, uh, and they dis, uh, they will uh, uh, disallow uh, that garment, they will dis. Uh, portion it, that garment, they will take off that garment uh, uh, that wraps around them uh, uh, there, you know uh, uh, even in warm-ups uh, with the track person uh, they warm up uh, uh, they do their warm-ups in their sweatsuits uh, but when it's time for the race uh, that they will take off uh, uh, those sweatsuits uh, and prepare for the weight uh, so that's how it is uh, sometimes uh, uh, people People have a sin like a sweatsuit that's wrapped around them that uh, they uh, 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 that wraps uh, and, and winds around them. Uh, let me put it to you like this: uh, that easily beset us, something that you can easily do, and something that bring it about exposure uh, in your life uh, or in our lives. That sin that wraps around. Now you know, I'm sure that you may have uh, so many people uh, that says uh, that they are born again uh, and say that they are uh, set free uh, but I tell you uh, the difference uh, between a believer and unbeliever uh, is that we do not intentionally uh, go out and sin uh, but I tell you uh, that there is a, uh, maybe a sin that, that wraps around your mind I tell you, I tell you, I tell you him, uh, the devil or uh, Satan, uh, he is not going to tempt you with something that you don't like. Uh, it can always uh, be with something that you like. Uh, well, let me put it to you like this. Uh, that sin uh, that bring that easily beset us, uh, that we are more likely to encounter uh, or rather uh, if we are in the presence or out of presence. Uh, we'll see uh, 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 let me put it to you like this. Uh, you know some of us uh, are uh, uh, saved, uh, sanctified, uh, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, but then there were some things we were doing before we even got saved uh, that we got comfortable with doing. Uh, and sometimes, uh, although uh, it became, uh, it was a normal activity then, uh, you be, once you became saved, is an abnormal conduct for a Christian person to do. 
But since you've been doing it for so long, it can easily come upon you as if they're being a normal behavior. Well, let me put it to you like this. You know, some people, yes, sir, you are saved and you are being sanctified, but yet you have the laws of association. Sometimes, you know, when you are born again, when you are a child of God, sometimes you have to disassociate yourself with people that you know go out and party all night long. And you know, you know, you know that no child of God should be going out clubbing and uh, all night long. You know, you know, some people, uh, yes, some think they are all that uh, and think they're holier than thou, but yet they are still doing uh, the things of the world. Your laws of association. And if you know, that there were times uh, when you was in the world uh, and the crowd that you hung around uh, that you would go out uh, and drink and keep on drinking uh, until uh, you don't have control of your own mind. Uh, you know you need to disassociate yourself. Uh, the laws uh, of association uh, or someone uh, that would cause you uh, to go out and sin uh, and live like you are still in the world. How many of us know? I tell you, I tell you, there is something out there that everybody that once used to indulge in, and every once in a while, they still go back and take a little nip of this or that because of what they used to do. Or is there anyone here who knows that you're not what you used to be, but you're not what you're going to be, but you also know you're not what you used to be. The, the, the Apostle Paul said there is a war going on that we are wrestling with our old self and our new self. And sometimes that old self will overcome the new self. And that's what we need to get control over. And the Apostle Paul said that uh, you need to uh, uh, set aside uh, that the part of us uh, that easily beset us. Uh, well, let me put it to you this way. Uh, you know there are some people uh, who in their profession uh, may be uh, a little power hungry. Uh, the elevation of society that ultimately uh, get caught up in materialism uh, and then uh, want once they get caught up in their materialism and that they want to mistreat or everyone else who they think is below them. Um, well, that easily beset us, something that comes natural to us, but yet is not conducive with that of the spirit. And I tell you, and then people who get caught up in the things of the world uh, tend to lose them uh, uh, focus uh, on their spirituality uh, and focus on God. Uh, you see, uh, you can start chasing after uh, the things of the world uh, or if you will, uh, the things or blessings uh, that God has promised you uh, uh, rather than uh, seeking after the blessing. Uh, you see, the Apostle Paul, uh, uh, while dealing with a situation where the people want to go back to things of the world to where they had fun. I think I need to share notice with you just because you are born again or just because you are a child of the king that does not mean you cannot have fun but it's the type of fun you desire to have have. And then, and then, and then, uh, you have these areas of 
of sin that easily beset us will bring about the exposure, if you will, that everyone has some kind of weakness. Your weakness may not be my weakness, and my weakness may not be your weakness, but everyone has some form of weakness that ultimately bring about exposure of your character. I tell you, I tell you, that is the area or the area that the life that we must guard become that we must guard and strengthen the area that you know you're weak in that you will work on and you will strengthen that area you know as sometimes the weakness that is in a person's life they cannot identify that it is a weakness for one because they do not know who they are as a person and once you recognize uh, who you are as a person, then you be able to recognize uh, the weakness that you have. And that weakness is not normal uh, to the things of God. But yet it brings about uh, abnormality uh, in our lives. So the Apostle Paul said that lay aside everything that brings about uh, the sin that so easily beset us uh, uh, something uh, that is a normal behavior to you uh, but is not in accordance uh, to the will and word of God uh, so we must work on all of us uh, uh, must work on uh, uh, that area in uh, our lives uh, and so then uh, the apostle Paul uh, is saying uh, uh, to the Christian uh, to these Hebrews uh, he said uh, that you have to run uh, this race uh, with patience uh, and so then uh, uh, patience uh, uh, is perseverance uh, and that is, uh, is not something uh, that's going to happen overnight uh, and I tell you uh, the race uh, is not given to the swift uh, but it is given uh, to those who endure. I tell you, I tell you, uh, Paul said, uh, just as uh, uh, it relates uh, to Christ Jesus, uh, he said, uh, how do we overcome uh, these areas in our lives? Uh, the apostle Paul is saying, uh, he says uh, to look uh, on to Jesus. You see, uh, sometimes uh, when you get caught up in yourself uh, and the things of the world uh, that you don't have uh, your focus uh, on Jesus, uh, I tell you, uh, it's just like uh, uh, when they had uh, the acronym uh, uh, years ago uh, that said WWJP, uh, what would Jesus do? Uh, so then, uh, uh, when when the situation arise, or when persecution will arise, or when, as the Apostle Paul has said, that we'll look unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. So what is he saying here? That Jesus, as he walked on the earth, he showed us how to handle uh, different situations uh, in our lives. Uh, he said uh, how Jesus uh, was scorned uh, and how he had to deal with uh, uh, the shame uh, of the cross, uh, uh, how he had to deal with uh, uh, people calling him names. Uh, you remember uh, they called Jesus uh, the Son of God. Uh, people called him uh, the Son of the Devil. Uh, and I tell you, uh, but Jesus uh, uh, did not uh, uh, retaliate uh, because he knew uh, uh, who he was, 
and I think I need to share notice with you this morning and I think I need to say yes there is a great persecution of the church when people call you by your out of your name I tell you you ought to look on to Jesus because Jesus the son of God that Jesus and literally of the valley had to endure so much for you and I and the apostle Paul said that we need to consider the things that Jesus had done that you will not be weary in your mind or faith in your mind or in other words that you will be able to give and I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, sometimes people lose their focus and then get on worried about what people are saying. And I tell you, that is one trick of the devil to control your mind. And if we control your mind and can't have you to give up on God, he got you right where you want you. So the Apostle Paul is saying that yes, when people put your name on the wings of the morning, that you will look up to Jesus. Oh, brother, and my sisters, Jesus had to deal with a whole lot of He came down. Uh, from uh, uh, heaven to earth uh, uh, people talked about him uh, uh, people put his name uh, on the ways of the morning uh, they challenged him uh, on every hand uh, they had uh, wanted to kill him uh, for doing good uh, but I think I need uh, to share notice with him uh, yes uh, uh, when uh, uh, she Yes, I knew why he had came. He endured the shame of the cross. What are you saying? That he had a wind wheel and a rocket of Calvary's ground. He went down the Via Della Rosa, the Lamb of God, had taken on the sins of the world. He the shame of the cross when they put a nail in his hands when they put a nails in his feet when they strung him high and stretched him wide he endured the shame of the cross the leader of this new movement is now hanging on the cross yes oh yes they thought he was they thought they had the lamb of God they thought they had uh, him, uh, the leader uh, on this cross uh, will bring her in uh, to the move of God uh, and she uh, had died on the cross uh, but I tell you uh, oh, Earl, uh, uh, that Sunday morning uh, he got out of the grave uh, with all power uh, uh, in his hand uh, and so then uh, yes uh,
Jesus, we have lost our mind. We do win. You kept your eyes on the Lord. And he brought you right on through. Or is there or anyone here who know the Lord will bring you through? Yes, sir. He endured it all because he was the example for you and me. And I tell you, yes, you may have to do it, but keep on looking, keep on holding your head up. He will, and he is our example. How many of us know who Jesus is? Then light are in darkness. The rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright morning storm, the Job house upon in the valley. Are in the all right? Are in the all right? Are in the all right? Let me encourage you. Keep on looking unto Jesus. No matter what may come, keep on looking unto Jesus. In the all right, in the all right. Let me hear you say yes, yes, oh, 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 oh yes. Amen. For He is our example, even as the Christians, the Hebrews. Had to keep on looking unto Jesus. For one had to deal with the persecution. And secondly, had to uh, lay aside every weight yes. and sin that so easily beset you. We extended an invitation. We actually could come by ladder Christian experience or candidate for baptism. Yes. 